This is Beyond the Bench with Nick Morgison and Nick Federa. A look at sports and pop culture from beyond common sense. The show that constantly goes off the rails and might never get back on. When you don't belong, you're a bench warmer. On this show, there's no riding the bench. This is Beyond the Bench on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Which number are we doing now, Nick? I'm totally off track here. Eight. Eight? Okay, episode eight. Well, it's been a crazy day so far, so I guess uh, <clears throat> we have some big uh, breaking news that just came down the pipe as we're recording this Wednesday. So. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get to that. So he's Nick Morgison. I'm Nick Federa. This is Beyond the Bench. And uh, so we kind of left this episode in the planning stages. A little short because you know what, just in case anything happened, and well, I did it. So well, before we get there, just so people know where to find us, we'll get to we'll get the pleasantries out of the way. Follow the show on social media on Twitter at Beyond the Bench One. Uh, follow on Facebook, facebook.com slash Beyond the Bench One. Follow the podcast network at ETV Network. All right, pleasantries out of the way, and breaking news right off the top <clears throat> as we're recording this Wednesday. Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, his father, and their neighbor, William Roddy Bryan, found guilty of murdering Ahmad Arbery. On all, uh, on uh, eight of nine counts for Gre- uh, for Gregory Gregory McMichael and uh, for Roddy Bryan, I think it was like seven of the nine? Or, it was like or, seven out of the six or seven out of the nine. But the, Travis, point is, yeah. the point is they were guilty of the murder charges. Yes, essentially. So to give you an idea of how manic... Uh, this has been we at the time of this recording this had just happened 20 minutes ago so we are getting this to you hot off the presses and to be honest with you i mean none of this is surprising in the least it's surprising in that they that they got it right it's yeah i mean we're pressure. dealing we're, we're we're dealing with another case across the pike which we'll we'll get to that because i think you and i have some opinions on that one as well mr kyle rittenhouse which that just got finished and he basically was acquitted of all charges against him and it just seems like we've had a lot of landmark cases <laughs> over the last week yeah. or so and exactly. this this doesn't surprise me now i was asking nick beforehand because i i just and I'm admitting I don't have enough of the knowledge. I, I, we, you and I can have opinions on this, but you and I don't have the hundred percent proper knowledge to understand legal law when it comes to Georgia. And yeah. for me, I asked Nick, "What is this whole thing they're talking about with citizens' arrest?" Now I know what citizens' arrest is, but there's a lot of res- like restrictive law about citizens' arrest in Georgia and what a civilian can and cannot do now. I'm no expert on this. Of course, I'm not an expert at all of any law, but which is why you shouldn't hire me as a lawyer. <laughs> so if you see any legal ads promising my services, it's probably a fake. But that but, that that goes up there with the uh, cryptocurrency uh, advice. I mean, it, it, I'm just as qualified to do one as the other. So you know what? But what I from what I understand about the the citizens arrest thing as it pertains to this trial is that there are laws specific guidelines to what you have to do to make a citizens arrest in Georgia and apparently according to the prosecution I may be misremembering but I don't think they did it right they 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 followed the proper steps so they couldn't use that as a defense yeah but because you think but you think that that would have come up as a defense Right. But at the same time, you're chasing and this is going to sound horrible and I don't mean it this way. You're chasing a black man down the street. Three white men are chasing a black man down the street. One driving a truck. One has a gun and the other one is either punching or choking him. And Ahmaud Arbery is just out jogging, by the way. He has no weapons. They they apparently thought he was robbing something in the construction site, a construction site. He was just walking through it. He was walking through it. He, I think, he put, peeked his head into a. Um, he walked into it. That there, there's actual video of him walking into it, but he doesn't take anything. He didn't take anything. He just, he just peeking just to look at it. 
while he was on a brisk morning stroll, and he ended up dead. He ended up dead for no reason other than they didn't try. And apparently, according to the jury, they did it because he was black. So, you know what? It, it was... The other thing I don't get is apparently, according to Georgia law, now I'm just going based off of everything I've been watching, the the getaway driver uh, that was... Uh, William Roddy Bryan, I think. He got charged with murder, because according to Georgia law, yeah, that's because, considered murder. Yes, because even the accessory to the crime can be charged with the crime itself. That's how the law works in Georgia. And I was like... in uh, Yeah, in murder and robbery cases. And I was just like, wow. And I don't mean, wow, like he shouldn't have been charged. I just mean like, wow, I didn't know that was the law. They are very tough there. And usually, look, at this point, I mean, none of us, both of us weren't surprised by this verdict, but I'm just... Like I said before in the opening, I'm surprised that they got it right because, as we've seen a couple of times, even even in the Rittenhouse trial, even the, the even though that's not exactly the same, the criminal justice system is awfully scattershot when it comes to. It, scattershot is the best word I could use to describe the American legal system when it pertains to um, uh, ra racial justice. I should say it's pretty. Pretty piss poor, if I may say so myself. But what changed here is these guys weren't cops. These guys weren't cops. They were civilians pretending to be cops. And the fact that Ahmad Arbery was armed and trying to get and trying to get away from them when he was killed. Well, here's the other issue. Now I don't they had to move the jury away from a room that had apparently open, well, not open windows, but that you could hear the sounds of the protests from outside the court because they thought it was going to influence their decision on the case. Yes, they did. And by the way, I understand it's your freedom to protest wherever you want to protest, but why in front of a courthouse? People do that all the time, just like in the movies. But why? It, it, it's not going to change the outcome of the case. No, it's not. But 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 still, it, it's more of a symbolic thing. It happened. It happens all the time. It happened. It happened during Rodney King back in the nineties. No, no. It, well, it also just happened with uh, the cases we just had in uh, Wisconsin and. Oh yeah, in, in the Rittenhouse case. But still, at a certain point, you really do need to. It sucks to have to expect the worst in these in these situations. It sucks that the knee jerk reaction has to be, "Oh, he'll get off because he's white," but but you know, and, and as as you know, I'm a white guy saying that. So imagine how it must feel for somebody of color or a black person to feel like that. But but you know what? It's sad, like you said, that we have to think that we can't trust our judicial system mm -hmm. because we automatically think, like you just said, if because they're white, they're going to get off, and that's not how it should be. Well, you and I both think it, that's not how it should be. If no, you did a, it if you fit the crime, you do the time, as they say. I, I know it's cliche, but it's true. Look, in this case, we can be glad that they did reach the correct verdict in this case, given the evidence that was presented, and it was a good case by the prosecutors. Let me let me just point that out. But it is the bare minimum. It is the bare minimum in terms of changes we can make to our judicial system. The fact that it works now, we should that it works in theory, means it should be working a hell of a lot more often. Now, let's state the facts. The three of them are going to do life in prison, it seems like. Yeah, according to, according to the statutes in Georgia, I think it's pretty heavy. I mean, are they going to appeal? I don't know. I, they'll probably appeal. They'll probably appeal for a mistrial or. Well, you can't appeal for a mistrial once it's over. But the the, the def, uh, they're appealing for the verdict to be thrown out because they think the jury was tainted, because they asked I think a total of three times during the trial that the uh, that a mistrial be declared. The defense well, did. Uh, the uh, one uh, thing I want to uh, ask, which I'm confused about, is they. I think <laughs> I think Sharpton showed up and Jesse Jackson showed up also. And the and the defense lawyer said we don't need any more black reverends or something to that effect. No, and that was one of the excuses they made to get the trial thrown out. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're 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 right, and it's just every all the defense 
the defense the, you were just they the defense lawyers were just sounding more and more racist the, the more knots they had to tie themselves into trying to get these guys to to avoid jail time wait but the one thing i'll never understand and i think you and i've had this conversation many times in the past i you have to feel bad for the lawyer that has to defend somebody that's done something really 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 horrible and you have to try to, to get them not to do life in prison if they're court appointed, if they're court appointed, I do feel bad for them. If they took this job, uh, if they took this job, I don't have any. If they took the job specifically for the interest of getting paid, they're sir, I don't have any sympathy. Because I guarantee you, this was court appointed. I guarantee you, no one took the uh, Arbery case. You really, you really think nobody would, nobody would take this job for money? Do you realize that could destroy your whole career? If you took that as a paying job, that is a good point. That is a good point. <laughs> the Rittenhouse trial, I think he actually hired somebody because uh, apparently a, a bunch of different people <laughs> were putting up, were putting up money for that. But but he actually had uh, what's his name, Leon Woods. I think he had originally Rittenhouse. He was one of the famed uh, lawyers, and he got rid of him. And, there, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. How race and because both these cases have. Issues on they have, more they, have racial con they have racial connotations more uh, more so than the other, to say the least. But uh, and then the other case, you have se uh, Second Amendment, which is a whole nother, which which is which is com completely different. I mean, in a certain, but it, again, in a certain sense, this was pretty clear cut, pretty open and shut. This was this was clear cut and dry. There was no uh, in between. No, there, there was there was pretty much no ambiguity in anything. Even if they had managed to get off, it would have been on a technicality. It's not not anything that could clearly be defined as A or B in this case. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And the thing that would have worried me most is if this had come out as not guilty, we would have we would have been back okay. in. In the, the same city, place, the city would have gone uh, would have gone up like a tinderbox, and it would have been and it would have been absolutely deserved. It well, been, uh, you it would have been absolutely. You know what? I if that had happened, I wouldn't have blamed him because well, you let, know. Let's be careful. Admit, but you know what? We're talking about hypotheticals for something that hasn't happened. <laughs> no, no, no but I'm just happen. saying I would have been terrified if this had come down as a non guilty verdict, and well, like, well yeah cuz a you don't want to see you, you don't want to see the guy get off but but but, but still we went there through are, there are consequences to what you do we went through a whole situation here in new york of all places when we had the last situation with uh race after george, yeah after george floyd had been killed but when the whole george floyd situation when that whole thing happened the whole country went up in I don't know how I, I'm trying to say it nicely, but like it went up in flames. There were, there were there were protests and there were riots all across the city, but whether that was justified or not is not applicable in this case. Right, but I'm just saying is I was terrified walking around the city while I was still working there. Can you imagine this? I think this would have been ten times worse. Well, imagine if you were black, how you would feel then. Uh, no, no, I, I and I yeah, just I'm not in their shoes. Right, I'm not trying to. <laughs> I'm not trying to quantify the difference between black and oh, white. I, I, I get I, it. No, no, I know that. I, I know that. I'm just saying. But I just would have been terrified even more because we would have been back in a situation of destructive property all over again. Which is why we should be thankful that the jury reached the, the jury reached the correct <laughs> conclusion. At the same time, though, I'm glad they came to the right verdict. But at the same time, I don't think the jurors should be held accountable, like getting death threats. Oh no! Over not, over decision absolutely. making, absolutely. But well, the jur the jurors' identities are hidden, aren't they? No, no, I understand. But I'm saying, regardless if they came with this verdict or not, they shouldn't. You shouldn't be sending death threats to the to the families and people no. just because they're there to do a uh, what do they're they call this job? job. Right, but a public duty they call yeah. it. So. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I don't know. The point is, they got the right verdict. These men are... I don't know if I want to say going to jail yet, because, like as you would say, you have to be careful with the legal uh, language that you say. 
It's, but, why, we use the, it's why we use the big A, allegedly. I mean, it's hard to say allegedly, though, because the the verdict is in, right? I, yeah, I know. It's not allegedly anymore, but, but, but still. What I'll say to wrap this up is it's a cold comfort to, to Ahmaud Arbery's family because you, you saw justice is done, but he's still dead. He's still dead and he's not coming back and that can't bring him back and they have to live with that. And I, I, I just feel terrible for him and his family. It's just, and also, can you imagine what's going to happen inside the jail once they're in there? Oh boy, that's going to be fun. I mean, have you've heard the stories of when, and this is the weird thing I'll never understand in a prison is that like when someone uh, molests a kid or kills a kid, the, when that person ends up in jail, they go after that, yeah. that person prison justice. It's weird, right? Like they're in yeah. there for other crimes for years and years and years, but for some reason they all gang up on somebody that does that. Now I could see that happening in this type of situation, depending on where they end up. But I don't know. Hooray it, for the bare minimum. It is what it is. They got it right. Let's uh let's move on to something similar. So LeBron James. Yes, yes, get it out now. LeBron James hater, blah, 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 blah. LeBron James and the NBA comment on the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, which you and I haven't actually had a chance to speak on this since <clears throat> this trial verdict came down. Which, I mean, we'll, 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 we'll get into that briefly, but the, then we'll go to the bigger picture. But but just in terms of him get, him getting getting away with it, I just... Meet your next right wing superstar because he's going to end up because you let him off. He's going to end up making so much money. For the he was on with Tucker. What? What did you say? He was on with Tucker. Yeah, and he met Trump the other day. He well, is going to make so much money, and it's disgusting. Are Are you surprised that he that Trump met up with him? I'm not. No, not at all. In fact, I'm surprised it didn't take it. It didn't take. It didn't happen sooner. But still. The problem is Trump thinks that he was done, done, uh, excuse me, done wrong and blah, blah, blah. This Everybody thinks that everybody on the right wing thinks he was done wrong because they all have fantasies about doing what he did, which is shooting, uh, shooting protesters because uh, whether he was hit in the face or not, he what is a child going to a state he doesn't live in with a weapon? During a riot. I'm sorry, but you don't get to play policeman. And and by the way, can someone tell Tucker to shut the fuck up? I'm 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 getting a little done with his that like, that he had to go sit down and do a one on one interview. And yeah. oh wait, and, okay, and wait a Tom minute. House is his new golden boy. Wait a minute. And Kyle said to Tucker that I'm a BLM supporter. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. Did you see that the head of the BLM movement came out and said there's no evidence or proof of yeah, that he had no evidence of that in fact he had because the the judge had thrown out the fact that he he'd made comments about having fantasies about shooting looters right yes exactly i mean here's the deal the one thing i will say is you have to give the defense and i'm not saying because of the verdict the defense actually put together a good case. No, they put together a good case. A horrible, unethical, immoral case. But, no, but, no, but you have to admit that they did their job. They did their... Well, it's. I think it's more that the prosecution didn't do theirs. Agreed. But and, and, the, and the fact that the judge was acting like Kyle Rittenhouse's best friend. Oh, that... That... There's a lot of problems there, that I, I mean, have. I mean, when I, when I... When he was yelling at the prosecution and not yeah. the defense and, and reading a magazine... And his ringtone was uh, Trump's rally song. I think it was Lee Greenwood. And yeah, I heard that. You, you could tell from a mile away that this wasn't going to end well. The problem is, they could suck any less. I love how they yeah. said. I love how they said that this wasn't political. Of course, it was political. He went to a city that was being that that we, he went to a city that had a riot in it because George Floyd was was choked. To, it was choked to death by a cop. Again, and this is and I, and I don't have to do allegedly. There was proven in a court of law that he did it. And by so, the way, I just want to make it clear. Usually, we don't talk this much politics and and trials, but then kind of found us. But it's kind of found us in this yeah, case. It, it has, but but that leads us that leads us back to our bread and butter, which is 
LeBron James on Twitter. So <coughs> I have a different uh, perspective on this than you do. Well, first, let's preface the fact that LeBron was in the news already for yes, elbowing he, he somebody in the face. For being, for being suspended for elbowing elbowing uh, somebody in the face during a Isaiah game. Stewart of the Pistons in the face. Yeah, we both we both did ATB minutes about that for for our other. Our you other did the original, project. and I did the update on it. And, and I was like, I knew, I I knew he was going to come out and say. So you know what? Let me just beat him to the punch, and, and you know what? Let me just let me just get my opinion out there before he burns the whole orphanage down. <laughs> I mean, go ahead. What do you think about this whole thing? <laughs> what about Le about LeBron uh, about, about the NBA thing? Yeah, about the um, uh, about the Rittenhouse trial. Well, no, I meant. Do you think that he? First of all, I think LeBron got off easy in every way, shape, no, or form. I, I, I'm not going to rehash that because I made my point very clear <laughs> in the ETB. Besides, this is not a sports podcast. I know. So, I know. however, him getting crap for 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 uh, for commenting on the. On the verdict of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and not saying anything about Peng Shui, one doesn't have anything to do with the other. It's not. No, but it's not that's not the point. That's not the point that they're making. The point that they're making is that he commented on the Rittenhouse trial, U.S. based, and Peng Shui already already the NBA having a problem with China in the past. Of course, I mean, I mean, we started off the year talking about that. So, but I'm saying, don't you see a little bit of oddity again here again he's not stupid he, he no. knows what again he he learned once that you that you're not supposed to piss china off he's not going to do it again no i'm saying that it's not right that he commented about one political notion now he won't comment about this one well what's going on with peng shui we we're st it's still kind of up in the air well, because we tom Tom, our uh, Albano, our other host on Empty the Bench, actually put it out on our Twitter account. I don't know if you saw it the other day that she apparently did a video interview, which is not to prove, which doesn't really prove that she wasn't coerced, but it doesn't, but it doesn't prove anything either way. She's her, saying she's saying coerced, she's okay, coerced, coerced in, into recanting her accusations of sexual assault. By, but wait a uh, minute, wait. But they're saying she said she's okay. I don't know if I believe that hundred percent. I don't believe it, either, but but you know what. Take a healthy dose of skepticism. A healthy dose of skepticism is the case with all government. Even this one. <coughs> Sorry, I'm choking. It's making me choke. But but I find it interesting also. Fox reached out to the NBA's press team to see if they commented or, uh, let me see, Upland Workshop, an advisory uh, company founded and led by James Spokesman, Advisor Adam Mendelson, if you remember that name from the story we covered, oh, yeah. for a comment on Pe uh, Peng's disappearance and questions over safety and Fox did not receive any responses. Jeez, isn't that ironic? Of course, you know, it's Fox asking the questions, so they're going to paint this in their usual bad faith fashion. No, no, but I find well, it ironic. A liberal basketball media is falling silent on the, uh, uh, on the, on the issue of China and its iron fist. <laughs> I mean, it is a little apropos, but <laughs> so, uh, uh, come on! If if Tucker Carlson co could crochet that into a pillow, he would fall asleep with it every night. Well, I can't stand Tucker if my life depended on it. But I don't know. I yeah. it, you... like I said before. Let me make my point again. It's not a zero sum game. But the reason why he didn't is probably more multifaceted than oh, he just forgot. Yeah, but my my whole answer, I guess, on this would be if you're not going to comment on the Peng Shui thing, don't comment on anything. I mean, you could you could talk about you could talk about things things you like. I mean, I could I could talk about I could talk about the fact that I could talk about the fact that I love the Beatles, but then it doesn't mean that Rolling Stone fans are going, "Hey, you didn't talk about the Stones." It doesn't. But I'm saying is like. It. You're calling out one political situation. How about just don't call? First of all, the difference for us is we're we just don't like it when he does get political because he's the the the, per, the one person who openly does it and gets the most attention because he's LeBron James. Well, I can't stand it. Like, shut your mouth. Just make no, your... you can't stand him. No, no, I'm just. But I'm saying, him. shut your mouth. Make your millions of dollars and just stop with the politics. So shut up and dribble. Is that is that what you're saying? No. 
not shut up and dribble. You can have your opinion. Come on. No, no, no. You, you come I, on. I said you can have your opinions privately. If you want to have your opinions privately, that's one thing. I don't want to hear about it. Like if you're playing a game, you're playing, you're paying millions of dollars to play basketball. Honestly, I don't see it as a zero sum game. I really don't. I, I don't. He can comment on one thing and another. It doesn't mean he doesn't care. It doesn't mean he doesn't care. He probably does care privately, but he's not going to say anything publicly because he knows where his bread is buttered. So why is it okay for him to talk about the Rittenhouse trial then? Because he's LeBron James. People go to him for, again, to prove your point, he's LeBron James. The NBA or the NBA orbits around him. He is the sun, and everybody else, everybody else is the rest of the galaxy. Do you understand? No, I, I, you know, tell me that. I've known that forever, ever since he entered the league with the Cavaliers. But as a black man, as a uber successful black man, and an outspoken black man at that, I mean, you would expect him to have opinions about that. Did you also see that Enos Cantor wore shoes that were made with LeBron James uh, connotations on them? Did you see that? Which, again, Enos Cantor, he, he, Turkey wants him dead because no, of No, no, but he's railed against China and everybody and against yeah, Tibet. Yeah, and, the, and I'm sure that pisses off Adam Silver. Well, at the same time, you don't think he's thinking in his head, oh, wait, look all the attention I'm getting? I mean, that's kind of why you do it. <laughs> Now, Ennis Cantor is not LeBron James by any way, shape, Ennis or form. Cantor is not LeBron James. He, uh, not if, but still, he's known enough. Now, he's let me enough. let me make one more thing clear. I'm not saying LeBron Le LeBron James is still a top five player. Again, you we don't have to argue that. We're not arguing that. What I'm arguing is he can say what he wants, and who cares? I don't know. I just get annoyed when he picks I, I certain don't things. Into the whole shut up and dribble thing, because no, it's not. He could never really just done that. But I'm saying is, I like when he talks about entertainment stuff and movies, and he talks about the drinking of the wine, which I think is pretty funny. But <coughs> like, I don't want to hear politics from these athletes. I just, it's not just him; it's any athlete. I don't want to hear politics from. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree then. You want to hear politics from these athletes? No, I just don't care if I do. Because I don't, I don't get my opinion. Much in the same way that I don't get my opinions on honking from bumper stickers, <laughs> I don't get my opinions on politics from from athletes. Because I'm a because I'm a grown person. No, but first of all, I get my politics from the news and all that and uh, everywhere from that regard. But I just you can say what you want, and I have the I have my right as an American to disagree with you. No, no, I'm. Again, that's I even, fine. I, have, I even have the right as an American to tell you you're an asshole if I think that. <laughs> I think you. I think we, is. we've all done that. It jokingly, good fun, all the, over these last five years. Which, but <laughs> again, we've done that to everybody. We've called them assholes. We practically made a spectator sport out of it. Oh. The five years that we've been prod podcasting. I would say we would do a segment called the uh, "I Am the Asshole," but Barstool already has that, so we can't. Yeah. Do that. But still, uh, getting a little bit too inside baseball for this show. All right. So, well, I don't know. Are we done with this topic? I yeah. guess we pretty much are. All right. Let's uh, move a little bit away because we have one. We'll, we'll have another interesting topic in a few minutes. But let's talk about something funny. So, a man gets arrested after attacking Seth Rollins on WWE's Monday Night Raw. Now, so you'll have to explain to me what happened because I still. He went inside the ring and and and. No. So what happened was, you know how sometimes they'll set up like a separate, like rectangular. I, I don't watch wrestling that much, but like to the left of the ring, and sometimes they'll do like showcase stuff during Raw. Yeah. This guy jumped out of the side stands, like to the side. Oh yeah, because because the long thing where they do their walk, their intro, like basically the walk-in area almost. Yeah. And this guy jumped out of the stance and jumped on Seth Rollins and railed on him, basically. And, and well, for him, is is that what it, is that the moral of the story? All of a sudden, the well, I don't know if I really call them referees because they're a bunch of actors, but referees and security. All of a sudden, they can't get him off right away. He's punching Seth Rollins to death. Which, I mean, if he you were gonna say if he on, on the echelon of bad ideas. 
I mean, bad idea, you know, level zero, level level one would be investing in cryptocurrency and, you know, level, level, t- level 10 is blowing up a hospital because you don't like the, you don't like the peach cobbler is, <laughs> is, I think this is somewhere around maybe four or five bad ideas attacking a wrestler. Uh, well, the but the problem is Seth Rollins is in a rock and a hard place because <laughs> as much as like and at the end of it once they get the guy off he's like and like yeah and I'm like really you just got beat up and that's how you're acting he was probably drunk off his ass believe me I guarantee- no no I'm talking about Seth Rollins doing that oh well well you know what he's a showman at heart. He's a showman I mean, at heart. He needs, even if it didn't happen, even if it didn't happen according to plan, if it happened off script, you need to find you need to find a way to 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 play it off. But it makes me question, even though like they showed the security taking him out, like could that have been planned? Like someone jump out of the stands? It could have been someone that was planted there. Well, wrestling is planned, so you know what? It's not outside the realm of possibility. But the WWE came out and made a statement. I don't have the statement in front of me, but I read that apparently they won him uh, what's that statement called? Uh, at the something of the law. Fully it to the fully yeah. percent of the law. Now, they might just be putting that out to play the play the story. Well, that, but, that would be Vince being Vince, but, but still. I, well, I mean, it was Vince and the WWE put out statements. So, God, I wish Tom was here. We could talk about <laughs> I mean, yeah. but I left. I posted the video on a uh, our uh, ETB Sports account because it's more a sports story than a pop culture story. But and like people were commenting, he didn't get beat up. What are you talking about? I said, are you kidding me? The guy went on top of on him, <laughs> rolling on him. <laughs> you can't make this up. I mean, you really, really can't make this up. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can't move on. But uh. Speaking of being uh, way out of space, let's talk about going to space. So, you know, Nick and I, in the first couple of episodes, when this story started to rear its ugly head, and uh, we had Jeff Bezos and Amazon, and Jeff Bezos decided to play full supervillain and go to the moon. Right. Well, who and who were the other ones that he was competing with? SpaceX and SpaceX and Spaceship One from Virgin and. Because uh, Richard Branson, I think, was was, was trying to do something. Because that's all this is. It's, just, it's a pissing contest with people who have way too much time and way too much money. <laughs> and so the first. Are you really going to make me say it? Are you really going to make me say it? Dick measuring contest. Yes, it is a dick measuring contest. They are taking their penises out and measuring them with extendable tape measures, <laughs> just like the ones you would find at a Home Depot. They are using it. To measure the size of their penises because their wallets aren't aren't apparently the wallets aren't sufficient enough. But still, <laughs> let's let's just be honest with ourselves here for five minutes because it doesn't seem like anybody can be honest with Jeff Bezos and say, "Hey, you're not actually going into space. You're just knocking on the door of space." You go. It, it takes eleven front, minutes. You're on space's front lawn. It takes eleven minutes. I think is what I heard. Eleven to twelve minutes. So. Now that he's subjected William Shatner to the cold void of space, he wants to do he wants to do that to one of the greatest defensive ends, one of the greatest defensive giants, probably number two next to Lawrence Taylor, Michael Strahan, who has invented a pretty successful second career for himself. By the as way, a media personality. Yeah, I, well, between uh, Good Morning America and being on the Fox Sports NFL coverage, I, I mean, and everywhere. The man is hosting uh, the Pyramid, $100,000 Pyramid on ABC. This man, besides uh, Tiki Barber, has been one of the best second careers I've ever seen. Because he's always been personal, personable. He's always been uh, a likable guy. And you know what? He deserves it. And by the way, he, he was lucky to be in that iteration of the Giants and not now. Oh. Can you imagine if he was, if he didn't win anything? Would he? Uh, I mean... His name was still big, so he probably would have made it. It would have taken longer, but winning the championships definitely helps. You have to upset me like that. You're upsetting me. Sorry, I was just making a point. But did you see the suit they had to fit Michael Strahan in, though? What the space suit or the yeah actual- the space suit the actual space suit that they had to fit him for? Yeah, because he's a huge friggin' guy. 
he's like what is he like six foot something and like close to three hundred maybe. Again, again, he's a defense. He's a he was a defensive end. He is built like a brick shit house. So you know what? What doesn't surprise me. But all these space, like all this space competition of getting to space. Look at all the failure. You know what? You know what? You know what? Let me let me issue a challenge here on here on here on beyond the bench. Okay. Go into spaces for pussies. Go oh! into pussies. You know what a real person would do? You know what a real billionaire would do? A real challenge? Go to the sun. Launch a rocket into the sun. Uh, I don't know if that's feasible. Well, you know what? You've got enough money. Shouldn't you be able to fix it? Shouldn't you be able to make that possible? Doesn't money fix that? But launching into the sun? Okay, you don't get the joke, so I'm just abandoning the bit. What is it? Tell me what it is. Go <laughs> launch, launch, a, launch a spacecraft into the sun. Okay, but what's the punchline? Come back. You know what? Oh, 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 oh! I got it. Okay, yeah, I got it. Thank you, Captain Obvious. You completely torpedoed my bit. Okay, move on. Move on. <laughs> move on. Move on. Move on. Abandoned. Uh, abandoned topic. <laughs> Look at all the failure. That's for me. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I just. How much is this going to cost Michael Strahan this time? Or are they inviting him to go up? Are they actually charging him? or? I haven't seen anything. That, apparently, he said that he was invited to go up to space. Yeah, I'd hate to say I hate, I'd hate to say they stuck him with a bill. I mean, remember, we talked about Tom Hanks apparently was asked to pay like $20 million or something to go up into space. And that's Tom Hanks. Go up into space for 11 minutes. <laughs> you know what? The eleven minutes in space. I feel like this. This is the only thing that you should be hearing in space. I wasted twenty million dollars on this. I could have bought myself a Learjet that transforms into an even bigger Learjet. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud! I, I don't know. First of all, well, we haven't asked the question to each other. Would you go to space? Would you take the Blue Origin flight? No. 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 Because and I'll, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> space is terrifying. I don't know if you've seen the movie Gravity, but I have. Space, space is terrifying. It, of course, it's terrifying. And you, do you know how buff and in shape astronauts need to be? A uh, hundred times more than they are physical on physical condition. Do I look like I'm in peak physical condition? I can barely even say the words "peak physical condition." <laughs> Was that like the joke you made in uh, last episode where you couldn't remember where you were half the time? <laughs> well, yeah, but that, 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 that's, a, that's a common occurrence as you turn 30. You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, I would want nowhere near space. None. Um, now, I, there are plenty of different ways you can be a daredevil if you have that kind of money. Jump off a bridge. Go bungee jumping. Or base jumping, oh, God. or wingsuit flying, or or or, or 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 zip lining through the Amazon through the Amazon rainforest. You can do that. That's okay. I would I would of course do none of those things because if I had the money, you know what I would do? Buy a golden toilet. That. <laughs> and you know what else? What? Nothing. Oh, nothing. Nothing. I wouldn't have to do a damn thing. I could just sit on a pile of money in my living room and not have to move and not have to do anything, go anywhere, meet anybody, and just sit there and luxuriate until I die. <laughs> That's freedom. So not having to do anything and not having to worry about not doing anything. So you're Mr. Krabs. Essentially. You're Mr. Krabs from Spongebob, basically, where you, you, so you sit on all your money. So you're telling me you wouldn't do that? Well, no. First of all, if I had a lot of money, I would say F everybody and uh, screw you all for who screwed me over. But <laughs> well, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna build myself an underwater compound like Rapture. God, no. Actually, you know what? I would go. I would go and buy the business that screwed me over, and then fire everybody. But that's a whole different issue. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a story for another day. But still, moving all right. On. So now here's the story that's going to make Nick explode. So. J.K. Rowling, again. Now, we talked about this last week. 
where JK, uh, the Harry Potter reunion is coming to HBO Max, the same thing like they're doing for uh, that they did for Friends, and the, it's a 20 year reunion. We were all felt old and everything. And now JK Rowling is slamming, slams trans right activists for sharing. Trans rights activists. Right. The, Oops. Yeah, trans uh -oh. rights activists for sharing her address on social media. Now she's claiming that they doxed her. However, her dress is common knowledge. Right, but at the if same time... Google, if you, even before this, if you wanted to Google a picture of her home and get a Google image search, you could. That's true. So technically, it's public information. Yes, technically, it's public information. So really, what did they do? Not much. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. She's saying my family's address was posted. She li Don't they live with her? But I don't know if maybe they're maybe she's talking about her parents or something. I don't know. Uh, again, her uh, again, her. And if you have you seen the house her, her and her family lives in? No. It's a castle. Oh, is it? I don't know. Yeah, Does she have a moat around it? You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it had a moat or several crocodiles. I was going to say. Yeah. But but still, it's kind of hard to miss a big mansion. It's kind of hard to miss a, a fucking castle. By the way, it says here that. Uh, Rowling thanked the local police and Twitter support for helping her deal with the fallout all weekend after her address was posted online. She got the police involved! She is a public figure. Doxing somebody... Doxing somebody... When you're when you're a private citizen, then it's horrible. Because it happens, to the, it happens to trans people all the time. Wait it a minute. Trans people, when they get doxed, they get swatted, or they get harassed by, harassed by who knows what death threats out the wazoo. Wait a minute. Okay, now I have to call her out for something <laughs> that I just read in the article. So, Rowling tagged the users in her posts after they shared a photo of themselves in front of her house. You idiot! Why are you tagging them? Again, moron! So, really, is 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 this article really about the mean old transgender agenda? And it's, it's just... Is it about that? Or is it just about J.K. Rowling doesn't know how to use social media. Pretty much. I think it's more of the latter rather than the former. Wait, listen to this quote. Rowling claimed that the trio of people who took pictures in front of her house, quote, carefully positioned themselves to ensure that our address was visible. <laughs> what? That's the direct quote. Uh, uh, so, you know what? That, that That's what that is. J.K. Rowling does not know how to use social media. Don't know if I if, look if I if I post a picture on Facebook of my of me standing in front of my house and by but the the house numbers are right behind me and I'm going like this. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see it. Uh, I'm drawing attention to what to where my house numbers are. I'm drawing your eyes upwards to where my house numbers are. I hate to say this, J.K. Rowling, but here's my verdict on the matter. Mm. That's my that's my uh, answer on this matter. You're an idiot. If you don't want... Well, actually, I can't even say that if you don't want... If people walk by your house, unless you have a private gate in front of it, then you can't do anything about get a, it. Get a private gate. Get snipers and, and bell towers somewhere. Well, don't do that. Don't say that. No, then... yeah, um, get private security. Though. There you go. There you go. Billionaires do that all the time. They have private arms for Christ's sake. I, I just I, she's she's digging herself a hole, like bigger and bigger, like like just digging. You know what? She already torpedoed her legacy. I if I was just look, if I was if I was her publicist, I'd be like, Joanne, please, please stay off Twitter, please. Is that her please. actual name? Joanne K. Rowling, yes. Oh god. Now I know why she went by J.K. Rowling. Oh, please stay off social media. Hey, uh, hey, J.K. Rowling, I think you should go rolling down the curb and get away from all the spotlight. Ow. Ow, well, I felt that, that pun from here. Uh, well, I can't take it. First, she gets mad because of transgender rights. Trans because apparently that infringes on her rights for some strange reason. I've never seen well, apparently, a. Apparently, it's some kind of ventriloquism where th if they have rights, she has less rights. It's like a war. Let me ask a question. Do you think she's a billionaire? 
Absolutely. So she really doesn't need to do anything else if she really didn't yes, want to. She really doesn't need to do anything else. Oh, so now I just found the offense. Your legacy would be cemented if you went away forever. If you just sat at home and did nothing. Wait, wait. The offenders were activist performers. Holly stars George Frost and Richard Energy, who staged a protest in front of her house to mark Global Trans Day of Remembrance. I mean, you gotta you gotta you gotta give the guys credit for aiming high. I mean, seriously. Some of us just put out tweets for Trans Remembrance Day. Others actually go ahead, go ahead and make the dream happen. But what that makes me question is... <coughs> wait, wait, here's a picture of it. Wait, there's a gate in front of it. They can't even get in. So I don't know how they got the number. Again, it's public knowledge who, where, where she lives. So. But she's got one of those large gates like with the two open doors. Well, what's the problem if they couldn't even get in? Well, it's like you said. She has to be angry about something. Is she one of those okay. famous yeah. celebrities that has to get angry about something constantly? Yes. Apparently, yes. Apparently, that is the that is what is what is occurring here. And I feel bad for everybody who was a fan of her work and is just disgusted now. Because you know what? It, it sucks when your <laughs> idols are just turn out to be terrible people. <clears throat> I guess you could say she just committed witchcraft, right? <sighs> All right. Stop it. Move on. Sorry, as I'm clearing my throat. Uh, but <clears throat> speaking of committing witchcraft and disappearing, this story came up. <clears throat> a Chipotle general manager and four employees quit after surge of to-go orders drove them to the breaking point. Now, <clears throat> to make this clear, the pandemic has caused a lot of short shortness of shifts, and there hasn't been as many workers involved. Not just Chipotle. Anywhere, any business you look at, <clears throat> we've yeah. had issues. So they call it the great resignation, but whereas I call it, you know what? People are starting to realize they work shitty jobs and you know what? This isn't working anymore. I don't want to go do this. I want to go do something else. But wait a minute. My first reaction, you can tell me if I'm completely wrong or because you and I, you say this and I believe you. We we both reserve the right to be completely wrong on this. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> I do. So when I first saw this, I said, wah, I have to work hard. Was the first no, thing I thought. No, that's wrong. I'm telling you that that's the wrong way to think about it, because you know what? These 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 uh, these employees, service employees in general, are one of the most overworked and underpaid. Agree. Class of people in this country. So yeah, so but hey, you in the middle of a pandemic, you have to you you have to take you have to take other people's crap. I wouldn't. No, no I'm not talking about taking other people's crap. Th this story is specifically saying. That a general manager and four employees quit after a surge of go orders on a Friday or Saturday night, you could have full orders, full lines out the door. Which I get, you know what? There's only, you know what? All this could have been avoided if they just paid them a little bit more. But <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. that. It's and this is the part I'll agree with you on. In the story, it says that some of these employees were working eighty-hour work weeks, which is illegal. Is illegal. illegal. Seriously, which is. Yeah, you need to get the NLRB uh, uh, available. You I mean, need to, you need to get them on. You, you need to get them to look at that because that no, 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 no. That that's it's not even borderline. It's it's colossally illegal. It's horseshit, is what it is. I can and I can tell from experience when I was working in the radio business. I tell this story a million times just because people ask me, "Well, what job did you do that?" Well, I ran back and forth to the city. I had no choice. They said I couldn't work from home. They said, here's a police letter. You have to be here. And then when people were out with COVID, I ended up working like 45, 50, 55 hour weeks. And it was, and it, and it was a part-time job initially. Uh, it was always a part-time job because that's how those fuckers got away with everything. Yeah, yeah. But again, <laughs> they whip you because you're because you're low on the totem pole. They, they can get away with treating you like shit. And that's the point I'm just trying to make here, that unfortunately everyone is dealing with it. So to just walk off the job is 100% not the right answer, in my opinion. However, sometimes you just need to make a dramatic point. That's fine. And I and trust me, I understand what it's like getting overworked. I do. It's the most frustrating thing in the entire world when you're working very hard and you can't do anything to save these people. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> yes. It's horrible. Um, Again, that, I mean, that's the I don't state know, of labor in this country. I don't know about you, but like, I'm not going to say because you told me not to say what where exactly you're doing stuff. But you know about overworking and working a lot of hours, right? Oh, absolutely. Even even while I was working as a report writer, I was getting paid dirt for the work I was doing. I, I would I, end up, I would end up writing like forty page reports and getting paid twenty five bucks a report. But I, I just meant in general. Like I said, not going to say where you are now, but just the point that but, you're no, working. I, I, it's fair what I'm doing now, but again. I'm talking about what you did. You're a better example of that because they overworked you and underpaid you. Right. And I was running back and forth and they were expecting me to run back you and forth. And they retail before that, didn't you? Uh, I worked in a medical, uh, I forgot what they call it, like the medical billing type thing. Oh, so, but it was minimum wage stuff, right? Essentially, yeah. And then I also worked in Costco for a month or two before I got that job. Again, that, but, that's, but that sucked too, didn't it? It was horrible. I couldn't deal with it. I gave up on it after a month because <laughs> the customers were horrible. Which, again, I have sympathy because of situations like yours. It is what it is, but at the same time, like because of the way the pandemic is, you kind of have to suck it up and work through it, unfortunately, until people can be hired again. Now, people are starting to be hired again, which is great, but it's not enough. No, it's not enough. But you know what? We do what we can. All right. Let's uh, move on to uh, this story. Now, this was another controversy in the court system. No, tragedy is what it was. Yeah, this was a tragedy. And uh, so basically, the Waukesha Parade, this was what? The Thanksgiving? Uh, I or think it was a Christmas parade. So there was a Christmas parade going on in Waukesha. It looked all great and everyone was marching yeah, yeah, and it was fantastic but apparently but uh, uh again this suspect it allegedly drove his suv into the crowd and he killed i think like six people some of them children and he wounded i think like 40 right yeah well no he wounded like 62 oh god oh god and originally the number was five deaths. It's now up to six. Yes, it's now up to six as of this afternoon. But but uh, as of the afternoon we're recording this, it may actually go up by the time this gets posted. However, I mean, condolences with the victims, because the more we learn about this event, the worse it gets. The worse Yeah. It gets. I mean, the way this story goes, it's so apparently, uh, how do I say his name? Daryl Brooks Jr., was in a red car, which, by the way, I don't know if you saw this, Nick. Did you see that he used it in a rap video way back when? No, I so, didn't. Same car. Oh, God. <sighs> but if that didn't make that even worse, so he drove all the way through. He killed, allegedly, six people and injured, I think, close to 65 people. Did they say whether he did it on purpose? or He was running from another situation. Okay, so we need... Oh, God. Allegedly, he was running from a domestic situation. Oh, fantastic. So, you know what? Go to jail. Go to jail. Yeah, Sorry. go to jail. It's done. It's ridiculous. And apparently, they had to bring him into court in a bulletproof vest and everything. It was crazy. And, uh, I, which, again, I, I you, you gotta still feel horrible for these pe people because they, they didn't it, the, but shouldn't they have like concrete dividers on the uh, on the sidewalks? Or it, are, it was the line of sight where the parade was marching down. There's no you have to have one part of it open where you can go through because everyone's marching down the street. Everyone's marching down the street, but can't you have the uh, you know the uh, the the safety rails there? But he probably found the entrance at the beginning of where everyone marched into, <sighs> or the street that he was coming down happened to be the street where everyone was marching on. But now you're not going to have that. So, I mean, what's so are we going to learn from this? Like, is New York going to learn from this when they have parades? Is I think you're definitely going to see something. Uh, you're going to see something during the Macy's. Uh, during the Macy's, you're going to see at least whether a moment of silence or no, but I'm saying you're, you're going to see more security. You're probably going to see barriers bigger than the eye can yeah, see. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Why weren't there barriers there? But you know what? Now there will be. Unfortunately, you had to learn the hard way to do that. 
and now you they might push people further <laughs> away from the from the barriers too exactly because they don't want instances uh, th and they think one of the the six person that allegedly died was a what eight year old kid uh yes yes i mean uh, I, I, and, his older, and his older brother's in the hospital too but he oh. uh the, the the it's that he may make it they're saying that he he probably won't make it and there was a uh, some of the some of the deaths were like 51 to 87 in ages but, again horrible horrible just horrible. This man needs to be put away. Yeah. Never seen under the jail. I, I, I'm sorry. By the way, they under and, the jail. and they did declare him a flight risk. Gee, you think? Gee, on five million dollar bond. Gee, you think? <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. And apparently, he ran over his ex girlfriend, which was the mother of his child. Also, so he had a criminal past. Already. Oh boy. Okay. The story just like this is one of those things like where you keep this digging, is, you're gonna find yeah, something. They're, they're still like, you you keep digging and you're gonna find shit everywhere you dig. So it's just one of those things like man, this episode has gone like off the rails of case after case after so, case. So let's see if we can lighten the mood a little bit. All right. So going beyond this week, Nick came up with a good topic. Now I'm assuming this would what you were telling me was for Thanksgiving, right? When you were asking about that? Yes, yes, I was. Okay, so, go ahead. For going beyond this week, I figured I'd do something better and open it with a question. Okay. So we have for but first a preface. Okay. So we have pies and we have cakes. Ba basically standard celebration celebration stuff. For 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 the holidays, right? Everybody has pies, everybody has cakes. But I had a question. Somebody put uh, put a uh, it was a viral tweet up yesterday that made me think. And it's a question that I put to you. And the question is: You have vanilla cakes, you have chocolate cakes, you have straw cakes of any color. But does the flavor of a, is the flavor of a cake determined by the cake itself or the flavor of the frosting? Hmm. And I put that to you. Is a vanilla cake a vanilla cake because of the uh, because of the cake itself or the frosting? It depends what type of cake you like. For me, I don't. I, I I'm an ice cream cake guy. Yes, like, I, yes, I know that. But, but I don't. But, I don't like real cake, as they call it. Well, but ice cream cake has real. Sometimes some of them have real cake in it. Don't no, they? I I only like the ice cream ice cream oh, cake. Oh, the, Car the Carvel ice cream cake with the crunchy bits. Yes, or Oreo or whatever. I I don't like real cake. Why not? I just don't. I never grew up on it. I never liked it. It's too oh, dry more for more me. More of a pie person. What? More of a pie person. You know what's really good? An Oreo ice cream pie. Yes, yes, absolutely. I've made a I've made a couple of pie, but but still. In fact, I've made Oreo bark too. But <gasps> oh, you oh, my family and your family get along great because my dad makes barks for every holiday. Yeah, so does my aunt. So uh, the reason I ask is because look, a chocolate cake with vanilla frosting is not technically a vanilla cake, right? It's a chocolate so, cake. <laughs> yeah, my, my theory is it's a chocolate cake with vanilla frosting, which leads me to my thesis that a cake is determined. <laughs> what a cake is is determined by two factors. What the cake is and what the frosting is. And when you ask what kind of cake you're having, if you just say chocolate cake, that's not a satisfactory answer. It's a chocolate cake with vanilla frosting. That's what it is. But, if you, but let's say you're in an office, right? And, and okay. somebody's celebrating a birthday. And you ask them, oh, are we having a cake? Oh, yeah, we got a chocolate cake. What kind of chocolate cake? <laughs> Because it could be, because it could be a vanilla cake with chocolate frosting. It could be a strawberry cake with chocolate frosting. Could be one of those vegan cakes that nobody actually likes to eat. Oh, vegan cakes! Get the shit out of here. <laughs> it could be, it could be a cornbread cake for all you know. It could be one of those savory weirdo cakes. But still, I put to you that <laughs> if you say just a chocolate cake, isn't you have to be more specific when you're talking about cake. Uh well for me first of all my favorite cake is an Oreo ice cream cake that's my yes, favorite I, yes I know that but if if and hypothetically if you had a taste for cake would you define a cake as the frosting or the cake inside for me it would be the cake inside yes it would, thank you thank you thank you thank you 
The frosting, the frosting doesn't tell the whole story. No, the frosting doesn't tell the whole story, and neither piece by itself tells the whole story. Right. right. So let me let me go back to the whole Oreo cake thing. If you tell me that I can't define an Oreo ice cream cake as what's inside the cake, then it's not an Oreo ice cream cake. Like it would be like, oh, we're having we're having ice cream cake. What kind of ice cream? But that's like saying if that I can't makes say what difference. It's just uh, if you don't say what's in it, then you would just say like it's vanilla ice cream with cookies in it. Yeah, like, it's but, not because of it. But what if it's Neapolitan ice cream cake? Th then there are multiple answers. It's a multiple choice question. I mean, it's all dessert and it's all ice cream, so it it's should all, all be. It's all dessert, and I'm sorry I'm getting all philosophical about cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm this, laughing at this. This <laughs> has been bugging me for the past 24 hours, and I needed to get it out. And by the way, just so people know, we're going to release this uh, a day early just because it's Thanksgiving so people can see it on Thanksgiving. So if you're watching this, you're watching this on Thanksgiving now. So hi, <laughs> if you're enjoying your Thanksgiving dinner, make yeah, sure you're but, enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, hi, hi, hi. But but still, pumpkin pies are, but not all pies are the same either. Because Agreed. Pumpkin, because a pumpkin pie is not the same as an apple pie because a uh, pumpkin pie does not have a top crust. You know what though? Apple pie is actually not bad, but it depends where you get it. It depends. I'm not really a fan of pies, of non-chocolate pies, but that's just me. No, for me, like I said, I either like Oreo. For me, the top thing is either an Oreo ice cream pie or I've had a graham cracker crust pies, which are really yeah, good. Yeah. I, I, again, you don't you don't have that. You also have that kind of specificity with pies, because if you say, oh, what are we having? We're having pie. What kind of pie? Cherry pie. No, just kidding. Yeah, pies have different <laughs> bottoms. Pie, pies can have they can have uh, Oreo crust bottoms or graham cracker bottoms or right bottoms everywhere. I, I, again, <laughs> do you see my point? Yes, I do. It's not like it's not like baklava where the, where there's a standard definition. Wow, or, fancy. Or, or, or like a brownie. Ah, like now brownie you're talking my language. Now you're talking my language. Brownies. If it's a brownie, there's a stick strict standard definition to what a brownie is so you have that image of your head in your well, head i'll ask you wait is right wait i'll ask you one thing about the brownie do you like when it's cakier or do you like when it's more dried out i used to like it when it was more dried out but now as i'm getting older i i i, I need i need fudge I, you, I need all right fudge. good we're on the same page i need it i, I, need it. I just because when i was a kid like every time, like you would go to like Hebrew school, like I did, and they would bring brownies in for whatever reason, and they were always dry as shit, completely dry, and you felt like you needed a drink because it was because it was always the box shit. No, no, well, it was always every... the, it was always the Duncan Hines shit that nobody liked. But it was like so disgusting every time. Like people make brownies dried out to the bit. Like again, if you're going, but if you're going to make a brownie, they need to have moisture. You're not eating, then you'd be eating a cake. You'd be essentially eating a chocolate cake without frosting. Right. The it's amazing no how that all came back. Reference. It's amazing how that all went back into one yes, circle. The, the, again, there, there is also no discernible difference between a chocolate cake without frosting and a cakey brownie. Hence the name. <laughs> but for the most part, hopefully everyone's having a happy Thanksgiving as this is out on Thanksgiving Day. And... Uh, just it's the basically well Halloween was essentially the beginning of the holiday season but now we are actually when this comes out it's a month away from Christmas yes it is so holy shit you, yeah so we want you to know as we approach the Thanksgiving holiday we want you to know how thankful we are that you guys were able to stick around with us as we're growing and we're getting better and uh, through the ups and downs we're grateful for you this is why we do it and this is why we will we'll continue to do it. Right? We will do it even through the serious and the stupid stories. And that... we'll hopefully we'll get more stupid stories. Come and... back come back next week when I argue about breakfast cereal. <laughs> and by the way, just I'll let you in on a little teaser since we've kind of conf almost confirmed this already. There's going to be a big time guest coming in the, in the new year. Yes, there is. There's going to be a big time. We're not going to spoil it, but, but uh... I will say if you liked uh supermarket sweep growing up you'll get to you'll you'll kind of you'll kind of get the gist of it did you like supermarket sweep we'll end on this yes, did, I did. Did. yeah i absolutely did i was I like did every night i watched it on a tv network called pax do you remember pax uh -huh, uh -huh. now that i'm making us sound a lot older than we really are get, get me my walker get me my metamucil get me 
<laughs> give me my give me the clicker. I want to watch some stories. And you still can't remember where you are. <laughs> yeah, but I never can. So nothing's changed. All right. I think that's about it. Uh, if you're watching this on Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, try not to get too fat. And uh, if you do, who cares? Just uh, undo the belt and yeah, fall just keep on going. It's and fall asleep. Stop pacing yourself. Trip the fan will put you to sleep for a good four to five hours. So, uh, oh. and make sure that you watch some of the football, even though it's going to be really bad, really bad. Oh, yeah, but we'll get to that. So, so make sure to follow us at tw uh, at Twitter on Beyond uh, Beyond the Bench One for our podcast. So make sure you follow the Empty the Bench Podcast Network at ETB Network. You can follow me on Twitter at Nick Wright's Words, and you can follow him at N Morgison Radio. Make sure you subscribe to the ETB Network on YouTube by ringing the bell. Ring, ring it. the bell, damn it. Ring the bell, or I'm coming to your house. They're holiday bells. Ring them. Are you going to make sure that Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge never goes through his epiphany? <laughs> ring the bell. Come on. We're bringing you a service. We're, we're trying to make you happy for the holidays. The least you could do in lieu of tips is ring the bell. Yeah. I just want to disclaimer, we don't take money from people for likes. Just making that clear. Yes. So when you say tips. So <laughs> for Nick Morgison, I'm Nick Federa. I want to tell you, happy Thanksgiving. See you next week. See you back on the bench. Yep. See you, you next week. Good night, everybody.